I really thought I was done after the last video, but as many of you pointed out, and rightfully so, my series on life after VMware wasn't complete without a roundup summarizing the last four videos, so let's get to it. Hey there, home lobbers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. Welcome to the final, final video on evaluating your options if you're coming from the world of VMware and ESXi, with this video being my opus, my coup de grace, the finale of the series that has taken up practically four solid months of my time. In this video, I'm going to attempt to aggregate and summarize as much of the information as I can from the last four videos, put a nice little bow on it, and hand it over to you. In the last four videos, I looked at XCPNG, Proxmox, Hyper-V, and finally Nutanix as alternatives to VMware ESXi and vCenter in your home lab and for your business. All four platforms have pros and cons, so I'm going to attempt to compare them based on their features and limitations in the hopes that this summary gives you some ideas on which direction you want to take with your gear or business. If you haven't watched those videos, I encourage you to do so, one, so you know what I'm talking about and the amount of research that went into the summary, and two, to feed that YouTube algorithm, baby. I'm kidding, of course. What I do think, though, is watching those videos will help you understand how I came to my conclusions. So with that, it's time to commit death by PowerPoint. The first stop in our summary here is to answer the most obvious question, can Product X replace VMware in your business or home lab? For the most part, all of these hypervisors will replace VMware ESXi and even vCenter, but the devil, friends, is always in the details. Let's dig in. XCPNG, yes, hands down. It is the most analogous to ESXi and vCenter and is free. Proxmox, yes, absolutely, with vCenter equivalent features and added LXC container support, and as a friend in our Discord is fond of saying, will run on a potato and is also free. Hyper-V, mostly yes. With the exception of some Linux OS compatibility, it will serve Windows shops well and has vCenter equivalent features. Nutanix, yes, best suited for VMware users and businesses already invested in HCI or hyper-converged infrastructure. All of these hypervisors will run VMs without issue and with the exception of Hyper-V are either free or have a free version that you can run in your home lab or use to personally evaluate it for your business. Before we go deeper down the rabbit hole here, let's talk a bit about their underlying operating systems and how they're deployed. XCPNG's roots come from the Zen hypervisor, is based on Linux, and is entirely open source. A standard deployment of XCPNG consists of one or more XCPNG hosts for running virtual workloads and either the Zen Orchestra appliance, also known as XOA, or a deployment of Zen Orchestra to manage XCPNG. From a singular XOA or XO deployment, you can manage VMs, build clusters, and so on. Proxmox is also entirely open source, is based on Debian with a customized Linux kernel, uses KVM for running VMs, and LXC for running Linux containers. Deployment of Proxmox consists of one or more independent Proxmox hosts, each having their own respective management web-based consoles. And from there, you can manage VMs, build clusters, and so on. Microsoft Hyper-V is a component of Windows Server, and as such, is deployed after a complete setup of the Windows Server OS. Because Microsoft offers both core and the full desktop experience versions of Windows Server, footprints of a Hyper-V deployment can be dramatically different, and management can be done through a variety of different consoles. Hyper-V is entirely closed source. Lastly, Nutanix. Nutanix is comprised of a few different deployment components. AHV, or the Acropolis hypervisor, is the native hypervisor that runs virtual machines. AHB is based on CentOS at the time of this video and uses KVM for virtualization. In a typical Nutanix deployment, the hypervisor is deployed first, followed by the CVM or controller virtual machine. There is one dedicated CVM running on each AHV host. The CVM is responsible for all management aspects of Nutanix, from configuration management, storage management, cluster management, and virtual machine management to the GUI, all of those aspects run within the CVM. And while the native operating system is open source, all components of Nutanix are closed source. Now let's get more specific, starting with storage and supported storage types and deployments. XCPNG supports a variety of different storage deployment methods. From local storage to NFS and iSCSI to HCI storage using Exosan, XCPNG is capable of supporting most all storage deployment types. Proxmox, like XCPNG, is an equal opportunity storage consumer. Proxmox will support local storage, NFS, Ceph for HCI storage, and many, many more storage formats and deployment types. Hyper-V is Windows and as such supports all the same storage types that the Windows OS will, from local to shared storage via iSCSI and so on. Nutanix is the outlier among the group. It's only hyper-converged and as such supports hyper-converged storage from within the cluster itself. This means no external storage access with Nutanix, period. No SANs, nothing. 
With the exception of Nutanix, how you present your storage to your hypervisor won't be a limitation. If you have a SAN, bring your SAN. If you want to build a hyperconverged cluster, all of them basically have the feature set to accommodate HCI. Next stop is to compare backup solutions for these platforms. After all, storage is great, but without backup and restore, you're just waiting for failure. XCPNG has built-in backup and restore functionality and most recently supports Commvault as a third-party backup solution with talks of Veeam ongoing. Proxmox also features native backup and restore functionality through Proxmox Backup Server, and there are public announcements of Veeam integration on the horizon. Hyper-V is natively supported by all major backup vendors, including Veeam, Commvault, Rubrik, and many others. Nutanix has native support for Veeam, Rubrik, Commvault, Haiku, and others. When we started this video series, the landscape looked so much different than it does right now. Months back, the open source hypervisors had absolutely no third-party backup support. And now, thankfully, the market has responded and XCPNG and Proxmox are seeing the enterprise backup vendors stepping up and offering support for their platforms. This is huge for those platforms because having those options make those platforms more appealing to businesses that have already invested a ton of time and money into those third-party backup solutions. All right, let's dig into live migration, workload balance, and high availability features. First on the list is live migration of workloads. All hypervisors are able to migrate live virtual machine workloads between different hosts in a cluster, with the exception of Proxmox and LXC containers. You can migrate an LXC container from one host to another, but the LXC container must be shut down before migrating to another host in Proxmox. Next is automated workload balancing. In the world of VMware, we call this DRS or distributed resource scheduling. Let's see how the alternatives stack up. XCPNG will automatically migrate virtual machine workloads between hosts to balance load in the cluster. Workload balancing is based on CPU load only. Proxmox does not have an automated workload balancing functionality built in. However, there are ways of automating workload balancing via community scripts to automate moving workloads, and automated workload balancing is on their roadmap. Hyper-V supports workload balancing for both RAM utilization and CPU utilization of VMs in a cluster and can be managed by using the Hyper-V failover cluster manager. And lastly, Nutanix natively supports workload balancing across the cluster, similar to VMware. All four hypervisors also support high availability as a core feature of their clustering and will restart VMs on different hosts in a cluster if a host fails or goes offline. So let's talk about one of my favorite subjects, the user interface and the user experience of these four hypervisors. XCPNG's Zen Orchestra GUI in its current state is pretty basic and feels dated with a fair bit of wasted space, but entirely functional. That being said, however, Vates is working hard on an entirely refreshed UI UX for Zen Orchestra that will modernize the user experience. Proxmox is a hot mess of menus and submenus. At the risk of catching heat from devoted Proxmox users, the UI UX is ugly, cluttered, missing coherency throughout, and needs some serious TLC. That being said, it has great graphing, and you can do basically every Linux function you'd want through the GUI. Out of all four hypervisor UIs, I think that Hyper-V has to be the worst experience. For those of us who don't use System Center, using Hyper-V Manager is a painful, visually dull experience thanks to the Microsoft Management Console framework and requires you to go to different MMC consoles to manage different aspects of the hypervisor. Then there's Nutanix and Prism Element. Prism Element is really nice. It's clean, simple, and elegant, and in many ways better than VMware by Broadcom's offerings. Prism Element and the Greater Prism Central Management Console have fantastic graphing, alerting, and VM management out of the box. Now let's talk about minimum hardware requirements. After all, if you only have a potato to run your hypervisor on, then you need to make sure that your hypervisor will run on a potato. XCPNG requires a 64-bit x86 CPU running at a minimum of 1.5 GHz with a 2 GHz and greater multi-core CPU recommended. XCPNG requires a minimum of 2 GB of RAM with 4 GB and more being recommended. Minimum of 46 GB of disk space is required with 70 GB being recommended. Proxmox also requires a 64-bit x86 CPU, but does not list a minimum clock speed requirement. Proxmox requires a minimum of 1 GB of RAM, but recommends 2 GB for the host and more for virtual machines. Proxmox does not have a minimum storage requirement. Hyper-V requires Windows Server to function, so based on the current Windows Server 2022 minimum requirements, you need at least a 64-bit x86 CPU with a clock speed of 1.4 GHz, a minimum of 2 GB of RAM, and at least 32 GB of storage space for the OS install. Nutanix requirements are the most stringent among the group. If you're going to use Intel, your Intel CPU needs to be at least a Sandy Bridge generation, and for AMD CPUs, must be Zen or newer. You'll need at least 32 GB of RAM for the host. 
you'll need at least three different storage targets for installation. Your cold storage tier needs to be at least 500 gigabytes in size. Your hot storage tier will need to be at least 200 gigabytes or greater, and the AHV hypervisor will require at least 32 gigabytes of storage for the installation. And for the business-minded of you watching this, let's talk about cost and support. Starting off with XCPNG. Vates, the company behind XCPNG, currently offers two different tiers of support. The first tier, known as Vates VMS Pro, costs $1,000 per host per year, includes technical support, Zen Orchestra Enterprise, unlimited support tickets, and a one business day response time. For $1,800 per host per year, you can sign up for Vates VMS Enterprise, which gives you access to greater support experts, more enterprise features in Zen Orchestra, initial setup support, and more, and comes with a one hour response time for critical issues. Proxmox has four different tiers of support, starting with the lowest, Community. Community support costs 100 euro per socket per year and gives you access to their enterprise repos, all of the features, and community support. For 340 euro a year per socket, you can purchase Basic that gives you all the community features, plus access to the customer portal, and three support tickets a year with a response time of one business day. Next is their standard offering for 510 euro per year per socket, giving you access to all the lower tiers features but with 10 tickets per year, 4 hour response time during business hours, remote SSH support, and offline subscription key activation. And lastly, their premium offering for 1020 euro per year per socket. Again, you get all the lower tiers offerings but with unlimited tickets and 2 hour response time during business hours. Microsoft being Microsoft makes pricing complicated. Since Hyper-V is essentially free with Windows Server, your cost is going to be based on what version of Windows Server you choose to deploy. For Windows Server 2022, the data center version clocks in at $6,155 USD and licenses you to run unlimited Windows VMs in Hyper-V. The standard edition comes in at $1,069 USD and allows you up to two licensed Windows VMs. There are no licensing requirements for Linux VMs. When it comes to actual support, well, you're going to have to pay for that in addition. Lastly, Nutanix. Unfortunately, here's where we reach a problem. Nutanix does not sell directly to people and only through channel VARs. And, as I've been told by people inside Nutanix, they do not publish their retail costs publicly because of perceived undercutting of the channel partners. All this means I don't have real numbers for what Nutanix actually costs to purchase and the support that's provided. I can say that you can purchase Nutanix as an entire turnkey deployment with super micro based hardware or just software to run on your own hardware as long as your hardware meets the Nutanix hardware compatibility list. Where does this leave us? Well, here's the thing. Just in the last four months, we've seen an incredible amount of change in the hypervisor and on-premise virtualization space. All of these companies and many, many more are aggressively taking advantage of the hole that Broadcom left with VMware. A perfect example of this is the third-party backup solutions. Both XCBNG and Proxmox were happily running their own backup and recovery solutions with zero interest in third-party solutions. Once that Broadcom bomb dropped, those companies responded to customer demands to support those solutions, and we're now seeing changes happening in real time. I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever seen such a change occur in a technology space this quickly. Just imagine what this space will look like in a year from now. In terms of what hypervisor I recommend you switch to, well, you're not going to get that answer from me. All these platforms have their strengths and weaknesses, and your priorities are going to drive which direction you decide to go. I will say the following though, XCPNG will be the most analogous to VMware and vCenter in terms of deployment, management, and and familiarity. And I say this because Zen Server and ESXi have a lot of competitive history, the deployment concept is very similar, and thus have a lower learning curve. XCBNG is a fantastic solution. Proxmox will likely be more beneficial for those of you running on older hardware, need LXC container support, and are not afraid to get your hands dirty managing features like Ceph, ZFS, and a ton more. Proxmox is also a fantastic solution. I personally dislike Hyper-V, but as many of you reminded me in the comparison, it has its place, especially in environments where people have already purchased Microsoft Server and are predominantly Windows shops. The familiarity of Windows makes it a viable solution for Windows people who just want to run a few VMs. And that leaves Nutanix. I'm not going to lie, the Prism element and Prism central user experiences is what all GUIs should be like and it's hard not to fall in love with that UI. That being said, Nutanix currently only lives in a hyper-converged world and for many of us who use a SAN, Nutanix has no play and that is a damn shame. On the other hand, people coming from VMware HC like a Dell VxRail platform will be very happy with Nutanix as an alternative.
And that, friends, will do it for this video and the Life After VMware series. If you liked it, throw us a sub and a like. And if you have a beef with anything I've said here, let me know in the comments below. Special thank you to our YouTube members. You guys help keep the lights on, and we thank you for it. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member or buy some of our swag. It all helps us keep making these videos. And now that you've finished watching this video, how about checking out our playlist over here about the great home lab and self-hosting videos we've done in the past. If you're looking for your next great home lab idea, we can help.